Last week, Ruchesh Sharma, Head of Emerging Markets and Chief Global Strategist at Morgan Stanley Investment Management, gave a very interesting forecast of top 10 trends to watch out for in 2021 exclusively to NDTV. And one of the big trends he spotted and spoke about, this is a great time to buy property in India. People's incomes have risen while property prices have not in the last three years because of an oversupply of housing units in the country. This has made homes in India very affordable. Richard argued, he also pointed out that economies could see inflation returning in 2021 and real estate also does well as a hedge against inflation. Across the world, what we have seen is that property does well as a hedge against inflation, uh, that when inflation goes up, typically property prices tend to do well. So this is a place where a lot of people still don't own a home uh, and the affordability metrics now are nudging them to buy a home. And in the rest of the world, we've already seen that, that uh, after the housing bust of 2008, 2009, it took a while for things to recover. But home prices from China to the United States have been surging over the last few years. And I think that India too could join this trend in the years ahead. India too could join this trend. Today on the Property Show, we speak to leading industry experts to find out whether they agree with Rajesh's view. 2021 is the year to buy homes and property in India. I'm Anisha Natrajan and my guests today are Renu Karnad, Managing Director of India's biggest housing finance company, HDFC, Amrita Farmahan, CEO, Global Private Client, Ambit Wealth Management, who brings a unique perspective of whether the rich and the wealthy in India are beginning to buy real estate once again and where. Samir Jasuja, founder and CEO of Prop Equity, a company which has been mining the most credible housing data for almost two decades. Pleasure to have you all with us on NDTV and I'm going to toss my first question to Renu Karnad, ma'am. The question is that all the factors aside, I think people, especially in our country, buy homes only when they're confident of their jobs and the economy. Do you think that confidence is coming back? Uh, so, Manisha, definitely uh, the confidence in housing and buying a home is coming back, okay? Uh, it is true that people buy a property only when they're very comfortable, whether they'll be able to repay a loan, whether they'll be able to uh, meet the commitments. Uh, having said that, I think uh, in terms of job losses, where you're seeing job losses, it's more in the contractual employment sector, more in the informal sector. There also, you know, in, if you see in particularly uh, the real estate sector, the migratory labor is all back. You are seeing, uh, you know, construction sites, having people working there. So uh, to come back to your uh, question, yes, uh, normally in bad times, people will postpone uh, buying a large asset. But these bad times that we saw recently also to some extent unsettled people in terms of not having a home in case something were to happen to them for their families. Uh, not being able to move as easily as they could, you know, uh, from one uh, apartment to another when you were in a rental housing. As you know, uh, umpteen stories of societies not allowing people to move in. You know, so I think that sense of insecurity and this is like once in a lifetime event that happened people have moved back towards having a house as an asset. You know, the millennials, if you saw them in the last few years, were never really thinking of buying homes. Still, you know, uh, the whole thing of we can rent it out, why should we buy? What about affordability of homes, ma'am? Do you believe, uh, as Richard Sharma pointed out, that residential property prices have not gone anywhere in the last four to five years, while incomes have? And affordability of homes is probably at the highest point now, especially when you add that to the fact that we are sitting on now multi-decade low on home loan rates. Nisha, absolutely. Three things, actually. The lowest ever home loan, uh, home loan rates. Uh, second is, I think every state government in its own way, I wish there were more, I, not every, I would say, many state governments in their own way have done something or the other to attract people to buy homes. Maharashtra has been a fantastic example. Okay, Madhya Pradesh has done something. We are see, hoping that some of the other states uh, uh, follow up. Uh, Andhra Pradesh did something. I think uh, the government's, uh, you know, attitudes towards housing has been very, very positive. COVID or no COVID. Okay, and third, most important, 
the developers actually being in a situation where today they will negotiate with you i don't mean negotiate in the sense that you know um, giving a you know in the past they used to say we'll give you a car and we'll do up your kitchen they'll actually negotiate on the price if they see a real buyer i think all these three things coming together has made housing affordable from a cost of the house point of view now to tell to talk about uh, incomes going up and the costs being where they are definitely affordability becomes better you're right there was an absolute beeline for property registrations in mumbai in november december 2020 when maharashtra cut stamp duty rates from 5% to 2% amrita farmahan some of these buyers were who's who amongst the corporate honchos industrialists and famous bollywood actors what are you picking up from your wealthy clients are they buying residential property now more than they were let's say at the beginning of 2020 and all of 2019 yeah hi manisha so you know before we uh, try and um, you know look at whether hnis and the who's who as you said are buying let's evaluate the investment case for buying real estate mm-hmm. and many of the things you know uh, as richard pointed out uh, in the uh, uh, opening that inflation has gone up so after a very long time you know the net uh, the real interest rates in india are negative after almost 4 5 years and when net interest rates are real interest rates are negative there is a move from you know uh, towards physical assets as well as towards growth assets uh, one second uh, as you know you pointed out that uh, mortgage rates are at an all time low they peaked from about 10 11% to sub 7% uh, you know generally if you buy a property and you take a mortgage and everything else being equal you know there is research that shows that a 1% uh down on the mortgage rate could mean effectively your price of purchase of the property is about 5% uh you so you consider that it's uh it's cheaper today in fact to even if you want to buy a property a home for uh investments it uh, the cost that you pay to or for the funding cost uh, makes it a very compelling case mm-hmm. and traditionally you know if you look at it rental yields in india have always been low right and but with what's happened in the recent past is that the bond yields as well as the uh, uh fixed income deposit rates for example have also fallen substantially so when you look at it from an investment perspective you find that that disparity that was there earlier is much lesser today uh, you know then you look at the affordability aspect of things or uh, you look at uh, you know the fact that the real estate uh, industry has been in a economic down, uh, down cycle since say about 2013 and as uh, uh, you know uh, renu pointed out that you know today our uh, prices have either flattened out or when you are a real buyer and you want to negotiate with the developer you are getting good rates hmm. so when you evaluate all of these things and then on top of that you see the psychological impact of the pandemic where a lot of people have had to evaluate whether you know there is an intention towards being the home owner or uh, for the reasons uh, you know previously discussed okay. in the hnr space uh, you know i feel that uh, we we are seeing a trend where people are going for larger homes as this work for home situation continues you want more space living areas you know your home office so we are seeing a trend where people for their own consumption are going for larger homes and i think also you know the other trend that we are seeing on the hni space at least is to go for a second home somewhere close to the city or in at least in the top 6 7 cities uh, have something that you can drive out to in a couple of hours uh, you know especially as this work from home situation probably becomes a more permanent thing uh, in certain industries wow very interesting very interesting you're saying that look now the low rental uh, returns that you get from real estate don't bother people so much because every other, you know bond yields are also pretty low and now they're looking at a growth asset especially in these inflationary times like real estate uh, samir i think people get the hang of it even before we start discussing on television programs developers have started reporting strong rebound in sales in the october quarter and on ground reports are that momentum continues even in this quarter what's your big view on what richard has said if you look at the new launches after january 2018 where the developers uh, have priced the product correctly they've got the sizes uh, right this time they've offered subvention schemes we've seen unprecedented amount of sales uh, sales are over 50% uh, 
uh, which means that the inventory overhang is below 24 months in in that segment, which was a new launch segment, which used to uh, really find it difficult to uh, sell properties in that segment earlier. We've seen a big jump there. Uh, in ready to move in properties, there's been a big jump. There are only about 75,000 properties left in the country with developers in the ready to move in segment. Uh, so having seen this trend, we definitely do feel that buyers are back in a big way. Uh, unprecedented amount of sales by branded developers over the last one year specifically, uh, which has also led their stock prices going really high uh, in uh, the capital markets. And, uh, you know, the capital markets always move much ahead of the real numbers. So we definitely do anticipate a lot more coming from uh, big developers. We've noticed that uh, their share is 5% amongst the number of launch projects, but the share in uh, the number of apartments that they're selling is about 15%. So top 25 developers in any city is selling about 15% of the total inventory. And the numbers show mm. that. And uh, subvention schemes also have really helped out uh, in uh, aiding sales uh, to people who were risk averse earlier uh, because uh, they couldn't get a flat in time and there were huge delays. I think that's a little behind us, especially with respect to new inventory. You're saying after 2018, Sorry. the new launches in top 25 developers, you're seeing really good traction in terms of uh, yes. home sales there. All right, let me just quickly get a reaction from Amrita. Amrita, has there been any shift in the age of people buying or the profile of people buying in India pre and post pandemic period? Are the millennials now more convinced about the value of owning a home with work from home like you talked about gaining wider acceptance? I think so, Manisha, because, you know, um, in any case, in, as Indians, traditionally, you know, we have life milestones of marriage, children, get a home. It's like a big goal in any case. And the millennials in India, unlike their counterparts, probably in the Western world, uh, you know, never really made that move to say that, you know what, I will not buy a house, I'm happy to not own assets, or I'm happy to live in dorms, etc. It is very much part of our culture. And now, on top of that, you put this work from home situation, uh, there is a desire, right? Like you want to, if you're spending a lot of time at home, you do want to, uh, you know, make changes, customize, you know, to your requirements, which not property, uh, are possible in rented properties. Uh, you know, there are many other compulsions. So I, you are seeing a shift where, uh, you know, like millennials and younger people are going flocking into equity markets. They're also looking, evaluating very carefully the real estate space. All right. You know, uh, Samir, you pointed out to a very interesting data point. You said just about 75,000 homes in the top 14 cities are now available. Uh, which are unsold. So we're going to take a quick short break here. I'm going to come back and ask you that question. Does that indicate that home prices are likely to firm up in 2021? We also have a Jeffries report which is talking about a 10% appreciation in real estate prices over the next two years. Let's validate that with our guests when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. Will 2021 be the year of property as predicted by Richard Sharma, head of emerging markets and chief global strategist at Morgan Stanley Investment Management? Right before the break, we established there is growing confidence amongst people to buy ready homes. Home prices have been stable for years, now making them very affordable and interest rates are at a multi-year low, which adds to the affordability factor. What happens to prices though? Are prices likely to stay the same in 2021 or are we going to actually see some appreciation? Looking at the fact that in top 14 cities, the ready to move in inventory, which is available for sale is only about 75,500 units. Samir Chasuja, we were discussing that. What is your prognosis on the price trends looking at the data? Well, uh, you know, there is one aspect that we haven't looked at is that the 2021 is going to see unprecedented amount of homes getting ready. Uh, so there is going to be a 75,000 inventory, which is ready already. And there's going to be another 2.5 lakh units that have to come uh, get ready in the next by in the next one year in this coming year. So if that is on track, 50% uh, uh, of sales have already happened in that segment. So if that is on track, we won't see prices moving up on 20, in 2021, but we will definitely start seeing an uptick in prices from 2022 onwards. Uh, and uh, there has been very low production of new houses uh, with respect to new launches over the last four or five years. And uh, the inventory is coming down 
uh, every every quarter as we see an inventory overhang numbers are coming down so we definitely do see an uptick in prices not in this year but definitely from 2022 uh, to 2022 uh, middle uh, of next year uh, we, we do definitely see prices going up Redu Kanad ma'am, what's your opinion on prices? How are prices likely to play out in 20, uh, 2021 and then probably going forward? Are they likely to remain flat or actually start ticking up? So, Manisha, if you uh, look at Bombay, I think Bombay prices in the last quarter have gone up. Okay, the prices are so related to demand. Coming back to your inventory thing, you know, I think the prices will move up slightly, but I don't think the prices are going to go up the way they happened you know, uh, five, seven years ago, where you were literally seeing galloping prices. See, there is an inventory there. Once this inventory gets used up, I and unfortunately, the last few years haven't seen too many launches also. Uh, but I think now builders are gearing up in the next couple of years to see some more launches come in. I think the prices will move up a bit, but I don't expect the prices to, you know, uh, shoot up the way they had happened a few years ago. Two views, both Samir and uh, Renu Karnat saying that prices are not likely to uh, spike up or go up. Uh, Amrita, what's your own sense, especially for, you know, you pointed out to a very interesting trend that uh, at least the wealthy and the ultra high net worth uh, investors and uh, individuals are looking at second homes. I know that the Goa market is on fire, but suddenly there doesn't seem to be enough in Goa for people to buy uh, independent homes. And then there are other markets as well. Give me a sense of where there is a shortage amongst, uh, in the kind of real estate which is desired today. Yeah, so I think other than, you know, just a second home in a scenic beach or up the hills, I think the trend that we are noticing is that, uh, you know, people who live in cities such as Bombay, Delhi, etc., looking for homes close by where, you know, they can, it'll be a two, three hour drive. Uh, you know, it work from home, it seems will be a hybrid model going forward where you work maybe three days a week and two days you can work out of home, even when, you know, normalcy returns. So we are seeing a trend where people are looking uh, to buy homes closer to the city, but out of it, you know, okay. in nature, where they can enjoy that lifestyle. So, you know, multiple markets and smaller markets that are coming up and, you know, they don't want to compromise on the quality, security, all of those things also make a difference. So it's not like you would go out in the wilderness and, you know, have your farmhouse. You want the amenities because this is not a getaway. This is actually, you know, leading your life, but you are dividing it between your city home and slightly off the city home. Hmm. So I think in Bombay, for example, places like Alibag, we are seeing the trend. You know, many people have spent the last seven, eight months uh, out there. Or, uh, you know, as you said, Goa has always been very popular. Even but I think it's yeah, it's going to be very close to the city more than like a second holiday home. Hmm. What about under construction inventory though? Uh, that remains a big concern still at a point in time when we were selling 5 lakh homes every year. Today, we are just about selling 2 lakh homes. And if I look at the property data, there are 7 lakh plus homes under construction across India with the inventory overhang of three to three and a half years. Uh, Mrs. Renu Karnad, is that an area of concern at all? So, uh, you know, very honestly, uh, the way uh, the middle class is growing, uh, I, I think uh, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm a, I really think, uh, if not next year, the year after that, um, the, the economy is going to come back to normal. Uh, you are, you know how many people we have. 65% of our people are below the age of 35. So I think the inventory that you're talking about, which is a three years inventory, very soon will get used up, Manisha, according to me. And I think it is time, and, and any housing project in India takes anything from three to five years to actually for you to get your apartment in your hand, starting from the time it was uh, conceptualized. So I think uh, it is time, as I said earlier, that next year we should hope that some builders will come up with, uh, you know, new projects, launches. Uh, we are seeing interest even today uh, of the stronger builders trying and uh, to look around and scouting around for good projects. Maybe some they are taking over. I can give you a number of examples where a successful builder is taking over projects of a not so successful builder or a builder who's temporarily in trouble 
and making sure that in the next two, three years, those projects A, get completed, B, if you know, there, there is uh, more land around, they complete the rest of the project. I think that is happening, Manisha. So uh, according to me, uh, we shouldn't get so worried about a three and a half year inventory uh, because uh, once this, uh, you know, people start buying, the sentiment comes back, uh, which what I'm seeing is happening, uh, it should happen much more. It's just the beginning. I, but I think we are at the cusp. Uh, I you know, it, it, the, the the homes will be sold. Manisha, the most important issue today, more than anything else for our sector, is those homes which are nearly complete but need the last mile funding. Those need liquidity. Those those builders need money to be able to complete a house, complete the project. People have bought apartments. They have made major payments, but that last 15, 20 percent of cash flows people are refusing to pay because they don't see anything happening on site and the builder is stuck that is uh, the dire need of the sector today is to somehow get money either through the government the government has set up the swami fund the aif where they put in 25000 crores or it's 50% of that has been set up the next 50% has to come up i think we need four more such a, you know uh, entities to be able to complete these projects. I think mm. that is the need of the R Manisha today. Ma'am, thank you very much for that detailed answer and very uh, interesting point that, you know, uh, don't worry about the inventory overhang. Uh, our young population, especially if the economy keeps growing, will ensure that that inventory is soaked. Just get those incomplete homes to get completed and there you need the government support. Amrita Farmahan, uh, Samir Jasuja and Renu Karnat, thank you very much for joining us here on the Property Show. Let me wrap out by saying just a few things that uh, if the government can look at making GST for under construction homes zero to match the ready homes, plus states like Delhi, Gurgaon, Goa, Chennai, where stamp duty is unusually high, they can take the step of rationalizing it I think we could see a big acceleration in residential real estate in India, boosting overall economic growth and making 2021 a truly outstanding one for property after a long hiatus. I'll see you same time next week with another hot topic. Stay with NDTV 24-7.